today we just started by looking in, at some of the most successful gamification campaigns of 2018 that might inspire you guys. We know a lot of guys have been doing campaigns for uh, maybe for uh, Christmas, December, maybe for the fall season. And maybe there are some of these things we're going to show you now that can inspire you guys to find out what the next campaign should be. Okay, so the agenda, as I said, we're going to start out looking in, at some cool campaigns uh, that has been really successful throughout 2018. But we are also going to look at some current campaigns that uh, that's uh, active right now and, and, and trying to, to do some really cool things. And, uh, and after we've been through these campaign examples, these cases, we'll be looking um, on some of the key lessons um, or learnings we've had throughout the year. Um, we learn a lot from from you guys or from other of our intelligent uh, clients, uh, customers when they build campaigns in the system, um, and we really like to to take away some of the some of the points or some of the good ideas we see. Um, afterwards, we will have a Q and A session where you can ask some questions. I would advise you just to answer uh, ask a lot of questions in the chat. We will. I won't be answering it throughout the case uh, studies. I will just take it up in the Q&A session where I'll be able to answer. So just paste away from, from every time you see something you, you want to ask a question about, and we will follow it up in the Q&A session. And in the end, I will do a bit of the recent product releases, and I have a little uh, goodie bag for you guys because we have a new game, and I want to reveal it for you guys in the in the, in the final part of this uh, webinar. So I hope you stick it with us all the way through and you're going to see what kind of new cool game we've built into the platform today. Okay, so a little about me. My name is Mess. Um, I heard from my British colleague that I should, per I should say that it's pronounced like the word mass, M-A-S-S. -S. That's the real pronunciation and I took that to heart. So it's mass. And I'm the product specialist for this family. I've been here since uh, since we started the company out. And I've been working with some of the largest companies in both Denmark and internationally regarding doing uh, marketing or HR or just doing overall communication campaigns. Um, and I have some experience regarding developing these high performance uh, gamification campaigns and uh, and what you should think about before, you know, trying to 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 build a campaign or or to to yeah, to 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 do some specific uh, campaign uh, things you want to do. Um, Lead Family, in, uh, overall, uh, is a company that was founded originally in 2017, but we've had a much deeper history uh, than that. Uh, we have had, I think, 10, 12 years developing different online and uh, platforms and all sorts of things, and also a lot of gamification-relevant things. But the company Lead Family was originally founded in 2017, where we launched this, this uh, CMS system, uh, the platform. There's been some really cool couple of years, especially 2018, we've had a cr tremendous growth. And we now can see that we have more than 300 customers across the Nordics and the UK and the Netherlands. And we've opened up offices both in the UK and Netherlands. Um, and we have a lot of uh, yeah, cool big brands we really love working with. Um, next goal here for 2019 is um, opening up an office in Helsinki. We've been having a lot of success with Finland these last couple of months. Uh, so now we can really see that there's a big potential over there. Um, the Finnish people are not uh, that talkative, but they are really to the point and they want to do something. So so that's going to be really interesting. Next thing is Berlin and Germany. Uh, looking forward to opening up office down there in February. And then later on this year, we're going to go to Sydney. And I look forward to that because I love Australia. And I, I believe it's more warm down there than this in Denmark right now. So it's going to be an interesting year. And what I'm really excited about is also that we finally have a really well-defined customer success team. So I'm really looking forward to, to this year because uh, now we have much more, uh, much more capable of helping out our clients and, and, and building campaigns if, if that's needed or, or ad advising towards different other options and different game types regarding what people want to do. And I'm going to introduce you today to Birgitte Holm, which is our new head of the customer success team. And she's already, they already like four or five people in the team and I'm continuously hiring new. So there's going to be a lot of resources uh, that can help you guys, uh, help you guys along and, and generally just to better serve our, uh, our customers. But without further ado, I think I'll jump into the first campaign I'm going to show today. Um, this company is called Imerco. It's a Danish retailer, one of the biggest retailers in Denmark. And what they specialize in is 
home uh, home goods, you know, like pots and pans or decorative things, and they got a, a really large uh, selection of different types of products. And of course, since they are both an e-commerce company and a retailer, they want to generate a lot of leads. So this campaign was a classic lead uh, campaign. It's a spin and win because it's a wheel of fortune. Um, and you can see that there's an Easter theme in this campaign. This is something Imerco always been really good at, is utilizing seasonal campaigns like Easter, or like Advent calendars, or like whatever else it could be. Um, and I can try to, to play the game here. So I'll just open it up. Okay, so um, campaign, is this is from the last year, uh, 2018 and uh, Easter. I'll uh, start the game up here. I'll put in my information. And I can I able to play the game. So you can see I registered just for the newsletter here. So this is where they get new newsletter signups. Now I'm at the Wheel of Fortune itself, and you can see there's some different options I can win. I can win this designed, um, you know, decorative monkey. I can that's, that's actually really expensive. It's a designer monkey, so so that one is a real cool prize, and that was instant win. So if I hit that field, I would have won a specific product, which has a, a I think it's a, around 100 euros or something. Next up, I can win 5% on the, uh, the e-commerce site, uh, which uh, this is just a discount code. Th that's facilitated. When I hit that, I get a discount code right away, so I can go in and, 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 and buy something right away. It's a really intelligent way of doing it because, of course, it's not really a price. It's more like an incentive for people to buy, so that's intelligently done. And then they have this lottery ticket for a gift ticket of, this is 5,000 Danish, which is roughly around maybe 800 euros or something. Um, and I can try to see if I can spin and win. I gotta say, I know that I'm not able here to, uh, in no way I can, can I win uh, the, the decorative monkey, but I can win the lottery ticket. But unfortunately, this was the draw was for 4th of April in 2018. But um, a fun little game. Uh, and what we saw uh, is really strong uh, results in this. Uh, so if I go back here, I look at the result page. So first of all, to sum it up, it was an Easter theme campaign. And this led to a lot more people being engaged because we are less skeptical uh, regarding commercial campaigns like this when we are either in Christmas mode in the December month or in Easter like this. So it's really intelligent to, to do these seasonal campaigns, plan about, and then do something for Easter or Valentine or summer vacation or your birthday or whatever it could be. So this is really intelligent, John. And Imerco are launching a campaign like this for Valentine in a week. And we expect somewhat the same results as this. It's gonna be a real good lead campaign for them. So the, the conversion rate, this is where people land on the site and the likelihood of them signing up for the newsletter, putting in their name and their email and accepting that you can uh, you know, send newsletters to them. 77.8% conversion rate is really, really a lot, especially because of the high volume of participants. And they got 20,250 um, you know, mails, uh, signed up in this uh, campaign. So a strong lead campaign. And this, what they told us uh, from Imerco is that this generated a real large percentage of their overall yearly goal of, of lead generation. So really strong lead campaign. Uh, and they won a lot because it was a Easter theme campaign, a seasonal campaign. Okay. So the next campaign is, uh, this is an American burger chain called Carl's Jr. They also have a Danish department. Um, so this is in Danish, but I'll try to explain what's uh, going on here. But the concept behind this campaign is that it's a, it's a burger selector. You'll find out what burger fits you. And this is one of, we saw a game before from our high converter category with scratch cards and, and, um, and Wheel of Fortune. But this is from the more deeper engagement, constant engagement category type. So this is a, a product selector, but it could also have been a really difficult quiz or some sort of personality test tool. Um, but you can see, I'll try to open it up here. So I land on this again campaign site. And what Carl's Jr. really want to communicate and why they want people to be here is not only they want people to, you know, be hungry for a burger, so they are more likely to buy a burger, but they also want to talk about why they are unique. Normally, when you go into their competitors, uh, the burger will be pre-made and sitting on the desk. But in Carl's Jr., they actually built that delicious burger uh, right when you um, order it. So it's freshly built. And that's one of their key values. 
that's what they say the difference this is what they do this is what they, makes them uh, different than the other guys so i'll try to start the game and see if i can um select a burger that fits me and then i'll uh, participate in a, in a prize for 100 burgers at carl's jr okay so how do you like your burger uh, american uh, juicy uh, classic or a, a spicy burger healthy burger or interesting and different i'll go for a spicy a spicy burger i like it with a bit of a, a spice what, a, what about melted cheese is that a, a go uh, thumbs up or thumbs down well i think everybody loves melted cheese so i'll go for thumbs up here bacon is that a must have hmm yeah i actually like i like but i like bacon in my burger so what about the bun what do you prefer they actually have some burger without a bun that's really weird uh, but i think for so, some people who don't like that it's fine i'm really classical that way i'll take a, a clean uh, burger bun here guacamole in a burger is that a go or no go i know i'm going to be controversial here i like guacamole but not in my burger no thank you and what type of beef do i prefer big angus steak beef double beef or chicken i think the angus beef sounds real nice and the last question which type of onion do i prefer uh, raw onions, um, onion rings that's deep fried, or no onions, please. Well, deep fried onions sounds real nice. And then I find out that I'm this Western bacon, Big Angus, American style burger. You can see it with the delicious uh, onions and the bacon and all that. So this burger would be perfect for me. And of course, this picture makes me want to buy a burger from Carl's Jr. So this is really, really a cool way of getting people to get engaged with uh, Carl's Jr. and the option to buy a burger down there, getting them a bit hungry. But what we also see is that this was also really a good lead generator. So people could put in their name, email here, and I'll put in my information. Because now I could participate in the prize. Yes, I'll sign up for the newsletter. And now it says, thank you for your participation. We hope you found the perfect burger for you. If you're interested in knowing more about us, you can click here. So we talked with these guys afterwards. And what they told us that this was actually a really, really, really strong lead campaign. They, they started out in December. Um, first of all, they got a really a lot of engagement, a lot of interactions. Um, we could see that concurrently there was always 100 people playing this game at any time. It was crazy. People were sitting and trying to find out the Dream Burger all the time. So that also led to the campaign up till now. It's still active, but up to now it had had almost 200,000 campaign visits. But as a lead engine, it was really strong. They saw that they got 19,000 uh, registrations and almost all of these are new uh, members on the newsletter. This is really strong. Then they looked at the cost of acquisition regarding uh, when they marketed this on Facebook. And they talked about this was around uh, not, uh, 0.2 euros for a new lead. That is crazy low, crazy low. People would pay uh, 10 times that. But but here they saw really, really, uh, a really strong uh, conversion uh, pricing for, for, for getting new, new contacts, a, a good cost of acquisition. And I'm glad that they, they did uh, a burger selector because I like, I like burgers, I gotta say. Okay, so the next campaign is a bit different. This is an international IT company uh, that deals in the business-to-business -business universe. And for example, they have a lot of uh, IT security. So they did this IT security quiz campaign, how secure is your business? And a lot of people, have, of course, are concerned also regarding GDPR rules and all that. So a lot of people are concerned about this. So they built this quiz here. Originally, it was embedded inside the own site. Uh, but uh, it, it ran uh, like a half year ago or something. So, so I'm just going to play it full screen. First off, people could choose which area of expertise or which area are you working with? Are you working with the network, network security, data compliance, or are you more into cloud security? So, okay, I want to talk about data compliance. So I want to test myself on that. And depending what I click on, I get a quiz regarding that specific um area so depending what i click i get questions regarding this general area i take data compliance and it says when should your company uh, encrypt your the, uh, your personal data hmm well i think that's uh, when our data is on a file server no that's wrong it's actually when our our data is in a in movement and changing around okay when a person uh, you know comes to you and say we need to delete my personal data what are you uh, what do we need to do uh, well, we only need to uh, to erase data if it's possible for us, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. I need to erase data right away. 
Uh, what about your company? Should they uh, do backup of personal data? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so if we are more than a, a thousand uh, employees. No, you should, you should actually do that even though you're only 10 employees. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. What about your company? Should they document who have had access to personal data? Uh, no, yeah. I think we should. I think we should document who had uh, access and uh, to this data. Uh, actually, there's more to it than that. What about uh, how much? How many hours uh, it they must go before an, a company must report an, an incident? Uh, it doesn't. And I can say how many hours they are here. I'll say I don't need to report it, but I actually do need do need to do that within 72 hours. And it says my overall result was really bad. It was only uh, uh, below 50%. Damn, so I actually really don't know a lot about uh, data compliance security. Uh, your score is really in the bottom. So try talking to one of Arrow's solution specialists. Get in contact here. So what they do is that they, they, they answer, they ask people a lot of questions. And when people are not able to answer these questions, they, they, they suddenly are aware that we lack some knowledge here. We are, not, we are not as intelligent as we hope to. So maybe we should contact these Arrow solution specialists. And this is a way for Arrow to get new leads, new potential clients, or more with existing clients, more work with them. You can also sign up for their uh, event, the Arrow Security Inspiration Day 2018, the 4th and 10th of November. It's free to participate. So they also got their event out there. So this is a really cool way of doing it a bit differently. If you look at this campaign, it was highly relevant for those clients that they're connecting to. You can choose an optimal sub relevant to you, a subcategory relevant to you, so if you're only doing cloud security, you don't have to test it out in something that's not relevant for you. It can be embedded in your own site via an iframe as they did or as other of our clients have done throughout the years. And what's really strong here is that we reveal some gaps in the security knowledge of these clients. So now suddenly they, are, they need to contact us because they don't know uh, what they need to know. So this is sort of like doing content marketing where a company maybe can do a big article or white paper about data compliance or something along those lines, but it's much easier for people to engage with a quiz. So, so this is an alternative way of doing it. And this was really successful for Arrow regarding uh, engaging both existing and potential new clients. Okay, so the next campaign I'm gonna show you today is a bit different. This is Vera Moda. Um, and this one is a bit funny because they launched, this is the third campaign they did with us and they launched this in the fall of 2018. And they know that now people are, are, are going into uh, the winter season and it's really cold in the winter season. So, of course, we want to sell some, you know, shirts like the one she's wearing now or some warm socks or something like along those lines. So they wanted to co-brand themselves with that element. And they used a bit of a fun term, which is a Danish term, it's a Danish company called Hygge. And I know not, not a lot of international people know what Hygge means. Uh, this is actually a really funny thing. But the concept is now that this quiz teaches people what Hygge is also in an international context and thereby also associating their Moda with that concept of Hygge, which is a positive thing. I'll try to take the test now. Okay, so first of all, they build a really elegant, nicely designed landing page here. A lot of information about their Moda. And now I can take the ultimate, I can take the test and win the ultimate Hygge kit and testing my Hygge skills. Um, so how often do you light candles? Because candles are really hygge. It's really cozy. Um, and I got to say, when I get home to my wife every day, she has turned lights on in the house all day. So I'll say all day, every day, and I like it. When do you treat yourself to something sweet? Hmm, well, I wish I could say that I don't have a sweet tooth, but that would be a lie. I've, I can always find an excuse for a sweet uh, treat for me. What's your hygge sock situation? Hmm, what's a hygge sock? Uh, well, a, pair, a cozy pair of socks, well, couch time isn't complete without it for me at least, so I'll say that one. How would you spend your ideal Sunday? Well, as long as it ends with me on the couch watching a movie, I'm happy. That's actually the truth. How does a chunky knit scarf, a big chunky knit scarf fit into your life? Well, that's not too much for me, I gotta say. I, I only bring it out uh, on snowy days. And two questions more. Where's your ultimate hangout spot to relax? Personally. I love relaxing at home, alone, or with friends and family. Last question, coffee equals life, yay or nay? And I got to say, for me, uh, I can't, I can't, uh, I love it. There's nothing like having a warm cup of coffee in my hands. 
So now I get output, I'm 100% Hygge. So I scored high on this uh, Hygge chart, um, and now I can actually win a Hygge kit. So what happens here? Well, people, they play this game, they use a lot of time with Vermoda as a brand. So they get engaged. Now they know that Vermoda actually have these cool products that are relevant when it's dark and cold outside. But you can also sign up for the newsletter in the end. But this is not th something as with the Emerco uh, campaign we saw, where it's a false thing up front. No, this is more like a thing you can do if if you feel like it, if it makes sense. So this is what not a forced sign up, but but something so you can win a prize maybe. Okay, let's look at the results of this campaign. To summarize it, they had a 52% conversion rate, so not as high as the Emerco one, but this is to be expected because it's not forced up front, it's put in the in the end of the campaign. But they were actually really surprised that it was it was so high. And they experienced 11,700 uh, game registrations. And what they told us from Vermoda is that they wish they would have uh, marketed this more heavily because it converted so well and the quality of the leads was actually really, really good. Also, they got to associate themselves with this Hugo concept, having a funny story to tell and interacting and, and getting people engaged with their brand and, and using some time, the time spent with brand is a really important factor for very remote in a case like this. Okay, I'm gonna jump into the next one now. So this is Aldi, German uh, grocery uh, retailer. And um, it's in Danish, but right now there's a, a big World Cup handball. So this is not from 18, this is from, uh, it's a recent one that's active right now. Um, I, am, I myself, I'm a big fan of, of the handball uh, World Cup, and I watch it every time uh, it's on. Uh, and I know a lot of people in, in Denmark are as well, and I think also, uh, at least in Germany and France, a lot of people are going to watch. So, of course, right now, there's a big hype for it. But in two months, nobody's going to, you know, watch or go have that hype about it, because it's the World Cup, it makes a lot of sense. So what happened for Eldi, I talked to Jacob from out there yesterday, and he told me that, okay, so... They, they actually suddenly have this cool prize, which was, uh, you know, tickets for the final. Wow, we have that. But they, they neglected to tell that to the marketing department. So they only got uh, noticed one week in advance, and they had one week to build this campaign. And I'm actually glad that they were able to do that. But because the family system is really easy to use, they, they could build this campaign within a week and launch it right when they wanted to. So uh, they almost missed out on it, but because uh, they were acting fast, they they got they got the chance to to do uh, to do this. I'll try to play the game because, of course, I want I want tickets for this final here. So this is a scratch card. I'll sign up, and notice here how many information I need to put in: my my name, both uh, surname and last name, my address, my postal code, my city. I even need to put in my of course I need to put in my email address. Uh, and my phone number as well. So there's a lot of information. And normally we say that should have a negative effect on your conversion rate. Well, let's see here. I'll try to go and play. Come on. I hope I win. Woo! Yes. Three of a kind. Perfect. Perfect. So now I'm in the lottery draw to win the fabulous prizes. I hope I win. I hope I win. Okay. So let's see on the campaign results for this one. Okay. To sum it up. They had a 74% conversion rate. And this was actually surprising for me because they asked so many uh, elements in the registration page. But even though um, they wanted to know address and postal code and all that, people actually still signed up. So there was a really high conversion rate. And I actually checked the stats today. This We did this a couple of days ago. But I checked the stats today and it's even more now. It's 74.4%. And they got almost up to 2,000 registrations right now. So this is a lead campaign but has been working really well in getting new leads. So I'm glad, I'm glad to see that they had success with this one. Yes, okay. Uh, so let's look at a bit of the key takeaways uh, for these uh, five campaigns we've been through. First of all, I would really emphasize the value of doing seasonal campaigns. We've been doing advent calendars for a lot of a long time in Denmark, and we get, we're now we've been doing it a bit internationally as well. We did a, a big uh, one in the Netherlands and in Germany and, and a lot of different markets. And because people are not as defensive, um, are not as they have not as, that many uh, barriers up regarding commercial uh, activities when it's a gamification campaign and when it's in a seasonal activity. So doing something 
along the lines of an advent calendar makes a lot of sense also for Easter, for example, or for Valentine. Regarding what brand you are, look at these options, look at these opportunities, and say, let's plan it ahead. Let's let's plan our entire year and say, let's do these campaigns for Valentine. Let's do it for Mother's Day. Let's do it for Easter. Let's do it for summer because these seasonal campaigns are easily themed, easily constructed, and generate a really high interest. The next thing that's interesting is that we look a lot of our, on our different game types, and uh, we talk a lot of, about the difference between doing high converters, which is a scratch card, or Wheel of Fortune, or doing these content engagers, which are which are more along the lines of a, an interesting quiz or a, a funny personality test or, or something along those lines. What is really important to say here is that even though we call it a high converter, and a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, so if I want leads, I go for a, I go for a high converter." What we saw from these cases, and what we saw from the cases, especially throughout 2018, is that when you do a content engager and you build it right, it can actually be a really strong lead engine. We saw the Cars Junior one, where the burger chain here got um, really low costs of acquisition for new clients, around. 0.2 euros is really really good so think about it when you're doing a lead generation you should of course do some of the quick fixes uh, and easy ones like a scratch card but if you do it right you can do uh, good lead engines also we're more did the same okay and the next takeaway we have here is that gamification actually works really well in co-branding so what do I mean by that well a lot of things we do when we have sponsorships or when we have some sort of communication strategy is that we want to we, know, we want to associate our brand, our company, with something else than what we are to, to make it more vivid and live. So, for example, uh, when LD are doing a campaign for the World Cup in handball, this is a way of co-branding them with, in this case, the Danish national team, of course, because it, everybody loves it. Denmark loves the Danish national team. And by doing a campaign like this, everybody is hyped for this. Um, and because people are not this um what can you say not as against all these kinds of of uh, gamification things uh, it works really well because now they use a lot of time in the visual universe we created this is especially visible in the viramoda campaign where they associate themselves with these uh, scarves and and, and hygge socks and and these uh, these uh, well knitted sweaters so here they also co branding themselves with something uh, and associating with something that is going to be winter it's going to be cold. Hey, that, that red uh, sweater actually looked really comfortable. I'm going to check their motor side out. And that was one of the things we can see here that worked really well is that people actually played a lot, um, had a long average duration playtime in, in their motor case. They used on average 2.07 minutes, so 2 minutes and 7 seconds, which is a long time with the brand. Um, so that was really good to see. The last key takeaway is that as we saw with the arrow campaign gamification can really sometimes reveal large knowledge gaps um, so when you have some sort of element where where you want to challenge your potential clients do they know a lot do, do they know uh, what they what you need them to, to know do like arrow because it works really well now people people are asking these questions finding out that uh, maybe I don't know as much about for example IT security as I should when looking at what I work with each day. And who's the smartest guy in the room? Well, I just played this really, really difficult quiz. And they probably know a lot since they ask these questions. The quiz master is the most intelligent guy in the room. Let's, let's, let's get in contact with them. So this is a really good way of, of doing this. We did it for a, a similar campaign we've done for a, a big bank in Denmark, where they had this campaign running since February last year. And they generated uh, a lot of new uh, clients through this uh, always on campaign uh, where people can quiz themselves in different types of of, uh, of difficult questions so use this if you have a lot of uh, knowledge you want to communicate we also saw see a lot of options to to take to, to use these quizzes to communicate content so so think about that and if you want to to learn more about this you can you can contact uh, our client success team uh, after this session but now I will move a bit into our Q&A. Uh, I'll just check if I had some interesting uh, uh, questions uh, for now. Um, so 
And while I just wait here, if you answer questions, uh, I'll look at some of the questions I always get when we talk. Um, so many of these campaigns, we, we, we talk a lot of statistics, and I love statistics. We love to, to look at conversion rates and unique participations and lead generated, and we love, love to look at click-through rates to sub-sites and, and all that. So a lot of people ask, so what can I actually track here? What can I actually do? So first of all, you have the option to integrate a lead family campaign with your Google Analytics. So let's say that you, you do a campaign and you have some sort of clickable links to your website. You can follow them on their CTA if they click through. And we've done a lot of campaigns, for example, for Vera Moda, where they actively got people to choose a specific product and then click through to that specific subsite. Another thing we can do, let's say you do the Carl's Jr. campaign and you, you end up being that Angus burger. It looked real nice, but I didn't sign up for the newsletter and I didn't purchase the, beer, the burger afterwards. So what they could do is, is that they could choose to have a Facebook retargeting pixel campaign running afterwards, specifically to me because I got to be that um, specific burger. And then they can market that burger and say, hey, now we have 20% off on the Big Angus burger. You want to buy it? That makes really a lot of sense. I got a question here from uh, Bubu Jacobson. How were these incorporated into an email campaign? And this is a really, really good question. So there's different ways of doing it, and, and you can do different things. For example, the, uh, the first one, that's what's just about getting new permissions. What they do with the emails afterwards and how they uh, get new data or filter them in, in correctly in their uh, CRM system is up to them. But we've seen a lot of cases where, where we have, have done a really intelligent incorporation uh, with this. So... We, one of our clients did a memory game this last year. It was a really, really cool campaign. You could win a, a really nice designer lamp, and you had to, to do this memory game within some certain time. They, guys, they marketed on social media and got a lot of click-throughs. They got, I think they got like six or 7,000 new leads, which was, was, was a lot for them. And then everybody participated in the draw for this designer lamp. One month later, they draw the prize, and then they sent out an email saying, so... Everybody, we found the winner. Check out if it's you. That email, you gotta understand, had a really high opening rate. Of course, people always want to know if they won. And of course, there could only be one winner. So everybody else, they instead got, sorry, you didn't win, but you get this 20% discount for your next purchase on our website. Click and buy today. They generated a large bonus uh, profit from this campaign. Actually, individuals from these emails that sent out, they saw that they, they converted like four times more on their uh, value created. So that was really, really interesting to see how you can implement it. Uh, another thing you can do is also, let's say you, you do a personality test, depending what I get for personality or product type, you can send me uh, relevant emails to me depending on what kind of type I was. Okay, so I hope that was a good uh, question for you. Uh, Okay, so I'll get another question here. Um, hi, uh, can, you make, can you maybe show how the B2B security company created the answer layout? Did you use a standard option or created it with uh, JavaScript? Okay, so this is a good question. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the platform right now, but I can tell you that what they did, and you saw they did this where there was this feedback loop where I, if I had a wrong answer, it was red. If I had a correct answer, it was green. They did this with a CSS coding inside the platform, but it's really easy. And if you want to learn more about how you should, could do this, you can contact our client success team and talk to Begida and her, her guys. Um, so it's actually really easy with CSS, and, and we'll be able to help you guys uh, build it as a part of a template uh, if you want that feedback loop, because I love it. I, lo I love being able to show right away, eh, red is wrong, and green is correct. Uh, and I've got another question here. Have you any example of B2B for on-site engagement, like how to encourage people to perform a task? Okay, this is a really, really cool question because, so, um, normally, of course, many of the campaigns is about reaching out and getting connection to new uh, potential clients, but I'm working, we're working, uh, I'm working right now with a big um, B2B retailer, and what they want to do is that they want to generate traffic around on their own site. So let's say that I, right now I'm only under one subcategory, but we want people more to go in under uh, contacts or reach out or FAQ or whatever. We can actually do a um, find find the 
Easter egg campaign, for example, where people actually actively have to click on. So that's a campaign running on your own site. It starts out with a pop-up, and it says here that you need you need to, to find this uh, five steps to to uh, participate in the draw, and then people actually move around on the site. So so they are performing tasks there. Um, yes. Another thing I want to fill out a bit about is also uh, regarding uh, the statistics part. Um, so a lot of people also always ask, okay, so when we do a quiz, for example, and we saw this quiz with the Veromoda Hugo questions, what can I actually get regarding data from this? And one of the really cool things we did without to, uh, within 2018 is that everybody talks, talks about data. Data is new oil and we want to have a lot of knowledge. We want to have a lot of uh, knowledge about our clients. So normally you would send out a survey, but we know people are not going to engage easily in that. So what you can do instead is that a question, a, a question Let's say that you ask a lot of funny questions, but the fifth question you ask is, how often do you actually need a new uh, pair of boots or whatever? Or we saw a, a big gas station ask, how often do you fill up your car? Okay, so that question was interesting. So through the API integration, we could map that up with the CRM system. So it's simply a matter of saying, okay, so how active users are these? One, two, three, and then we get that new information. Cool. If there's not any more questions, I'll move a bit more forward now and I'll reveal what I've been looking forward to, the new game. So we just built in Spin the Bottle. This is in the high converter category because everybody knows to how it works to spin a bottle. We did this with one of the big uh, brands we work with in Denmark uh, that do energy drinks and alcoholic drinks called Mokai. And, I'm, and they were uh, nice enough to let us try to showcase this little demo they're working on right now. So you can see here, there, there's this, this bottle and I can spin it and I'll see what I hit. Ooh, I hope I get a prize. Ah, no, I lost, that was terrible. I hope I get more luck uh, next time. So regarding graphics, this is really easy to do. The bottle in the middle is just a uh, transparent PNG, so you can build in whatever you want. This could be a pair of boots, this could be a logo. Uh, and, the, and the image behind, you can actually just, as with some of the other high converters, you can do instant win gamification logic here. So if I hit on that red bottle, I'll win a red bottle right away. So there's a lot of options here. Uh, you, you can do it, and this could also work really well in, at a convention, for example. It could be really, really nice. Okay, so I hope you're gonna use this. Another thing we also built throughout 18 is a swipe game, and I really love the options here, where people, just like in the Tinder app, need to swipe left or right if they like or dislike a product or a color or whatever it could be. And we can actually store that data. So that could also be a game type you can look into. Next thing, we have been working a lot about uh, how to do layout for the quizzes. So we know that they, our content engaged games are really popular, and that's a good reason why, because this way you get the really deep involvement. So look to the right. I think these alignments are a bit weird. So we've been working on a bit of a small uh, exhibition here where I'll try to left align these questions here. So you can see this is a new functionality. I left align it and I save. And this means that when I look at my questionnaire now, all the questions are left aligned. So that's one option we have. But what we can also do is we, we can build it in squares in, with borders. You can see now when we're editing the colors, what color we wanted to, be, uh, to have. This way we can have a more text without it being too uh, crazy with regarding to the, the alignment and, and how many lines of text we have. You see we're trying to refresh it now. And now you can see we have some really nice and chilled in the borders. And we can, we can build in the graphics so when I click on that specific one, it'll be green uh, for, for, for afterwards. So this is one of the ways we try to continuously uh, doing uh, more features inside the platform uh, and this is something that people have been talking about a lot long time normally we've been actually been styling these things uh, you know with CSS but now it's out of the box ready and that's a good thing because now it's easier also uh, regarding uh, when you look on automatic responsiveness towards different uh, browsers and different uh, devices and so on okay so the last thing that I'm looking forward to uh, is also to introduce you guys uh, to uh, our customer success team. Um, so we've been talking a lot with uh, we we put we've been um, we've been wanting to you know strengthen 
strengthened this for a long time now. Um, and we just hired a lot of new guys in the Custom Success team. And you'll be able to reach out to uh, to Begitta there. Um, and uh, I'll, I can get you in contact uh, with her, but I have her phone number here as well. Mm, okay. So, um, but you can contact me and I'll get you in contact with some of our client success managers, customer success managers, because there's a lot of options here. If you're not a customer yet, I will really advise you to uh, give us a call and get an introduction uh, to the to to the the platform. Um, I'll write in chat now the ma the phone number for Begitte, uh, so you can contact her. I wanted to have that on this slide, but I think I think you'll get it in chat now. So give a call to Begitte, our client success uh, customer success uh, new customer success director. Uh, and she'll uh, book. She can have a session with you guys and and get you in contact with some of the good customer success managers we just got started. But if you are new and you want an uh, introduction to the platform or what kind of options might be suitable for you, what kind of things you can do in the platform, if you have some sort of campaign you're thinking about, or if you just want to get up, get up, get on board, uh, you'll be able to get an introduction. And uh, you can just call me. Um, my name is right there. Uh, Forty forty four ninety nine thirty. Um, and we can have a chat uh, just about if this makes sense for you or if you should have a meeting or if you want to see how the platform works uh, inside out. Um, yeah, so hopefully you'll get in contact with us and hopefully you'll do a lot of cool lead family campaigns in the future. It's been an honor to uh, to talk to you guys today and I'm glad that there were so many participants. So um, yeah, um, have a great day. Uh, I'll sit here for a bit and... Um, and if you have questions, you can just uh, answer it. We will also record all of this and send it out to you guys. Uh, and in that mail, you will be all able to answer more questions as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad it was helpful. And uh, have a great day, everybody.